Heavy sleepers. What outrageous noises and events have you slept through? I've slept through numerous fire alarms and a tree falling into our house. What the hell kind of alarm clock do you use if you can sleep through a fire alarm? I sleep with my phone under my pillow, directly under my head, on full volume and vibrations, and I use a really loud and annoying electric guitar alarm. Sometimes it is unsuccessful. Not me, but a friend. He fell and took a nap in his seat at a rock concert. He first dozed off while him was playing and slept all the way through, taking back Sunday. He was stone-cold sober, just tired, apparently. Visiting an aunt when I was younger. I was taking a quick nap on her couch. While I was asleep, a power line went down across our front yard. Literally 30 feet outside the window I was sleeping next to. Multiple fire trucks, firemen coming through the house to make sure everything was okay inside, sirens, alarms, fire hoses, the works. I woke up after everything was over, confused why the carpet was dirty and the yard was burnt up. My boyfriend slept through thunder so loud it set off several car alarms in the parking garage right outside the window. When I was pregnant with my third baby, I woke up at midnight to the popping sound of my water breaking. I got up and went to the bathroom and confirmed that my water had in fact broken. Got a towel and went back to bed. Woke up at 5.30 in the morning with some big contractions and figured better go to the hospital. Went to the hospital dilated to 9 and the baby was born 20 minutes later. So, labor. I slept through my labor and transition. Highly recommend. I went slept through the process of my grandmother calling 911 for my grandfather, the ambulance coming to our house with sirens blaring, the process of him getting loaded into the ambulance and leaving. I woke up the next morning like, where did grandpa go? I didn't even know why he had been taken to the hospital. I think it was a broken hip. A 6.8 magnitude earthquake while I was living near the bay area where it hit. Everyone else woke up because of the heavy rumbling, but I stayed asleep. Meanwhile, I'd wake up to someone walking in the hallway in the morning with my door shut. For the reference of those who don't have to deal with those pesky tremors in their life, 6.8 on the Richter scale is basically adjacent to the scale that can severely damage cities at a shallow enough depth. If you live in an older city or one without stringent building codes, buildings are going to come down at that magnitude. I once slept through a tornado that happened about a mile from my hotel. My girlfriend woke me up at 2am saying how scared she was of the storm and that the power went out and she was worried. I told her while half awake to leave me alone, I'll deal with it in the morning, and it's just thunder, I don't know why you're freaking out. She was fuming at me when I woke up the next morning and found out that a tornado destroyed a high school not too far away. Once a tornado formed on top of my house when I was younger. My mom screamed my name from downstairs several times, but it wasn't until my dad came up and literally grabbed me out of bed that I came down. I was so teed off at all of them for waking me up at the time. I'm quite thankful looking back on it, though. When I was about six, I slept through our roof being torn off by a tornado. We were living in a remote area in a trailer on the construction site of our house. It peeled off and landed in a field down the road. My parents had to wake me up to go to a hotel. I wish I slept that soundly now. When I was ten, a huge thunderstorm brought the big oak in my yard crashing into the house. Luckily, my room was on the other side of the house, so it didn't get hit. I still slept. I woke up 10 minutes later because my cat jumped on the bed because the house was starting to flood. Good times. Not me, but my parents. They told me a story a while back about the time they stayed at a hotel in England for their friend's wedding in the mid-1990s. They stayed in room 1012. They went to bed as normal and sank into their usual deep sleep state. Upon entering the all-you-can-eat buffet breakfast in the hotel at 8am the next morning, they were approached by a similarly aged couple who proceeded to ask, Oh my gosh, what do you think of last night? My parents naively replied to the couple by saying, Oh yes, Julian Paul's wedding. It was amazing. The couple exchanged confused glances. No, not the wedding reception. My parents were confused now. All the commotion in room 1013, the room next door to you. The couple almost giggled as they expected this to prompt my parents. What do you mean? My dad asked as he naively continued to pile scrambled eggs onto his plate at the buffet. Turns out there was a massive substance bust in the hotel room next door to my parents. Armed police smashed in the door screaming, Armed police, nobody move! As like 10 police officers stormed the room. Multiple people arrested, one man tasered outside my parents' door, and a man screaming bloody murder as he was being cuffed. My parents didn't hear a thing. I once fell asleep at a Metallica concert in the middle of the show. Not a heavy sleeper, just exhausted. Now I wake up if the stars twinkle too loud. I slept so hard that my friends thought I was dead. They just kept shaking my non-responsive body. 
Why they did nothing about it is beyond me. God, my roommate once thought I'd legitimately died in my bed. I'd become completely nocturnal for a three-day weekend, during which she kept going out to parties, and she just let me lie there. Literally told me she was going to give me until Monday and then call campus police. Like, what if I had died and started to smell? What? I missed a whole Saturday once in high school. I just got back from a banned field trip where I didn't sleep much for four or five days, and I got home from the airport at about 3am on Friday and I passed out. I woke up and saw my clock said 6, looked out the window and I thought the sun was coming up, so I went back to sleep. I woke up a few hours later at 8 and it was dark outside. I was confused, because it should be bright at 8am. I came out and my mum was making breakfast for dinner, which also confused me, and she asked if I was ready for school tomorrow. I was like, no, it's Sunday tomorrow. As it turns out, I slept 36 hours straight through Saturday and woke up Sunday night, thinking it was Saturday morning. It's still my record for the most hours slept. I slept for 30 hours too once. It was on a Thursday and I woke up at around 12 and was freaking out. Came into the kitchen and started packing my school bag and my parents were just like, what are you doing? Packing my school bag so I can make it to the last lessons at least. And they say, but it's Saturday. How? Well, we couldn't wake you so we let you sleep. I slept through a fire drill at college once when I was really hungover. I wasn't hungover, I was solidly drunk, but same. I've slept through several because that happened all the time because of stupid people. Growing up, we had an indoor cat. Usually, we let him out in the summer, but usually not for too long. One day, we forgot him outside. Around 2am, he was crying at the door to be let in. My brother and parents heard it, but were mostly asleep. Soon after, another cat showed up and the two started fighting on our doorstep. If you're not aware, cat fights get very loud. My brother, who was in high school at the time, jumped out of bed shouting, It's Kitty! Our cat's name was Kitty. My brother ran out to help Kitty, followed by my parents. When my brother opened the door, Kitty jumped inside, but my brother didn't notice. The other cat started to run away. The other cat looked very similar to Kitty. So at 2am, my brother was running down the street in his boxes, chasing the neighbor's cat while yelling, Kitty, come back! My parents were chasing my brother while yelling, That's not Kitty! And I slept through the whole thing. Someone opening my front door, walking in, taking all my crap, and leaving without a hitch. It really sucked, but at least he took my school bag as well, so I had a great excuse to not have any homework done the next day. Oh mate, this sucks so bad, and it happens a lot. People walk into bedrooms and grab car keys from nightstands, and leave in the car parked in the drive. Very common occurrence here in Australia. I don't know why this would be more common in Australia of all places, but I too have woken up to the realization that someone has just wandered into my house in the middle of the night, and it is damn scary. I slapped my girlfriend in my sleep. She responded with a massive slap without even thinking because she doesn't take crap from anyone. I didn't wake up. She also apologized after. My brother used to kick real bad in his sleep, and when we were kids we had to share a bed for a while, being dirt poor and just having a caravan to sleep in. Well, he kicked, obviously, and we would kick him so hard back, but he wouldn't even stir. Just a really heavy sleeper. I feel terrible now for how hard I kicked him, not like he knew what he was doing. I fell asleep in my dorm room while in college. I lived alone. They had a fire drill at 3am. The firefighters came, opened each room, and checked on us. The fire alarm didn't wake me. They tried to shake me awake, nothing. So they called in an ambulance. These guys got a stretcher, loaded me up onto it, and started taking me down three flights of stairs. Once we were on the fourth flight of stairs, I woke up and tried to jump off the stretcher. Because, well, I thought I was being kidnapped. The ambulance guys still tried to get me to go to hospital because they thought I was on substances because I didn't wake up. The truth of the matter is, that's just the way I sleep. I have five different alarm clocks set to wake me up, but sometimes I still don't hear them while asleep. None of my doctors know what to do about it other than tell me to buy more alarm clocks. This affects my jobs badly. I hate it. I had to get one of those alarm clocks for deaf people. The one I bought is a sonic boom. It also plays one of those super shaking bed vibrating units that you can put under your pillow that vibrates. It also has a plug for a lamp, so when the alarm goes off, the lamp flashes on and off. It helped a lot for the first years, but now I've got used to it, so I need to change it up. I used to have an alarm app that made you do a memory matching quiz to turn it off, and every time you messed up the alarm, it got louder. Over the course of the year, I got good enough at opening my eyes, doing the memory quiz, and then going right back to sleep without remembering any of it. I fell asleep next to a speaker at a party. No alcohol involved. I've got a mate who used to take disco naps near the bass bins at raves. Absolute mad lad. Could sleep through the apocalypse. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. 
The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. I slept through a pretty decent sized earthquake. Not a little rattle, big enough that everything on the walls ended up on the floor. Slept through my neighbor shooting her boyfriend. Slept through the police and ambulance sirens. Slept through the cops knocking on my door to ask if we heard anything. This was in Camara, Wyoming in the early 80s. My kid's barfing in the middle of the night, and I'm instantly up. Exactly. Actual tornado? Nap time. Kids saying, Mom, blah, I'm up. Right? Why is the sound of pre-vomit calf able to rouse you from the most dense of sleep? Or pee hitting the floor and not going in the toilet? I have two boys who I've both caught peeing in the hall outside the toilet. I was about 12 at the time, camping with the family, and I woke up one morning with this large painful swelling bump that was obviously some kind of insect bite, but very obviously not a mosquito bite. I had plenty of those already at that point in the trip. My parents checked my tent and found a tarantula with dozens of little babies on it. Oh, hell no. Where were you camping at? Some state or national park in Kentucky or southern Indiana. Someone threw a Molotov cocktail through the window of a business under my apartment. Set the building on fire, fire crew, sirens, everything right out front. Read about it in the news that afternoon after leaving out the back. I slept through the whole thing. My family owns a beach cabin on the west coast and decided to have a family vacation there for a week. We didn't realize how big the entire family was, so all the parents decided to rent the neighbor's cabin so they could sleep in one, while the cousins could all sleep in the other. Since there weren't enough beds for all the cousins, I just slept in a sleeping bag on the floor. Apparently, in the middle of the night, my younger cousin fell off her bed and landed on me, causing a very loud thud. The parents heard it from the next door, rushed into the house, and my cousins and I were still sound asleep. I didn't even know it happened until the next day. I was on a safari camping trip in Namibia with my dad and his wife. I'm not usually a heavy sleeper, but we were offered a campsite that had a bar. Hell yeah. And I'd had a bit to drink. It was a long day and I was tired and a bit drunk, so I went back to my tent early. When I woke the next morning, both my dad and our guide started asking me if I was okay and telling me how brave I was. I'm sitting there thinking, of course I'm okay? I mean, it was too hot for my liking, but it was just as hot for everyone else too, so I can't imagine how that makes me brave. They explained to me that an elephant came to our campsite during the night and began to use my tent as a scratching post. I was a wrong step or two away from being crushed to death and had absolutely no idea. They assumed I was still awake, but I slept through the entire ordeal. My dad was losing his mind trying to do something, and our guide and the person who ran the campsite spent an hour or so trying to lure this elephant away from my tent. I guess eventually it just got bored and walked away. I'd actually thought they were just pranking me or something, but we were staying there a couple of nights, and that next night, an elephant, maybe the same one, I don't know, came in and was walking around the campsites again. Honestly, glad I slept through it, because I would have been crapping myself. I continued sleeping after falling from my bunk bed. The lower bed is wider, queen size I think. I'm sleeping on the top bunk and I fell, but I didn't wake up. My sister from the lower bed was woken up by the crash, as were my parents in the other room. When she was in her 20s, my now wife would sometimes fall asleep when she was out partying in the club. Like in one of those unbelievably loud dance clubs that people go to all night with VIP tables and a DJ, where if you actually want to talk to someone you need to bring your mouth right up to their ear and yell while they jam their finger in the opposite ear. It would be about 3am and she'd sneak off from the group and find a banquet or lounge chair or something and just go to sleep. Makes me feel really insulted when she complains now about my snoring today. I'm like, really? My snoring is too much. But house music periodically interrupted by the DJ blasting a foghorn is okay. I hate clubs like that. Thankfully, she grew out of them. It is funny that someone can be kept awake by the basic human function of breathing, albeit with interruptions, but can apparently get some deep sleep feet away from a booming speaker. Silly humans. Not me, but my brother. Sleeps through nearly anything. The most memorable to me is him falling off the top bunk, I was on the bottom bunk, and he made the loudest crash ever, followed by snoring. I'm a pretty heavy sleeper, but I haven't had anything happen to me. My mum, on the other hand, had someone bring a serenade to her place, and she slept right through it. My grandmother, who is typically not a heavy sleeper, slept through Hurricane Laura, and we were directly in its path 50 miles from the coast. It's been over a month, and she's still upset and confused, just saying, I, I can't believe I slept through that storm. I slept through Hurricane Opal when I was a teenager. Several trees fell in the yard and throughout the neighborhood. Mom and brother stayed up all night freaking out while I slept like a rock. 
In college, a cop came into our common area because the roommates were being rowdy. He apparently knocked on my door for 10 minutes before giving up. The roommates thought I was just hiding in there acting asleep. I was legitimately passed the frick out and the next morning I had no idea anything had happened. They all got written up though. Ha! Huh. I almost slept through the LA earthquake in 1992. I was at a friend's house for a sleepover with about five other kids. We were sleeping in the living room. Apparently when the shaking started I rolled all the way to the kitchen, was woken up by his mum freaking out and trying to get me out of the house. No one could believe that I could stay asleep during all that shaking and noise. When I worked at the coachwork part of an automobile factory, a colleague fell asleep in a bin of steel sheets and didn't even wake up when the manager pulled the emergency alarm for the entire building, thinking that he was seriously injured. And trust me, that place was loud. Slept through a dorm fire alarm and knocks and bangs on the door, countless alarm clocks and landing while a passenger on a plane. I regularly get woken up by my partner's snoring, though. My ex kicked, yes, kicked me off the bed. I slept through the alarm and she was trying to wake me up. Well, too bad. I didn't wake up to that and just turned on the floor to my side. I was told that I missed my bus after I woke up, confused on the floor. As an extra, I slept through a party at my friend's cottage. They didn't try to be quiet and apparently I got a lap dance. A bit bummed to have missed it, but everyone refused to tell who gave it. So I'm a bit uncertain of whether I should feel relieved or bummed out. Slept through a magnitude 5 earthquake. My mum told me about it after I woke up, probably hours after it happened. I slept through a suspected crystal head trying to break into my house. I live in a fairly decent area of my city. I say fairly decent because there are mostly families and few golden-aged households as well as some crystal heads that live on my block, where there's a huge Catholic church on the corner. My boyfriend was over the other day and he woke me up from a nap, apologizing for snapping on my neighbor because she had just tried breaking into my house. Luckily, he was awake because he ran outside after she tried to get away and yelled at her that she'll regret it if she tried that again. But she was so high, he doesn't think that the message registered too well with her. I can't believe I didn't hear all the commotion, but I hope she doesn't try that again. So my stepdad was in the military before he married my mum, and while he was in the military, there was an attack on the base that he was at. I don't know the name of the base because I don't remember what he said. Sorry, Reddit. But apparently from what he said, I'd slept through the entire attack. Now I don't know if he was just pulling my leg or not, because he's a really heavy sleeper. Like for example, one time our cat mittens had been jumping around and had pushed over a glass vase in the living room. My stepdad was sleeping in the living room at the time, and it woke up everyone in the house except for him. So I don't know if this is a real story or not, but I thought I should share this with you anyway. I grew up in quite a noisy neighborhood. I learned to sleep through everything. One day I'd gone to bed early and had fallen asleep really quickly. I woke up finally when I smelled something burning. I shot up thinking my house was on fire, something that had already happened once and the trauma was what woke me up and what kept me up. I looked out my window to see four cars on fire, two fire trucks and about 10 police cars and the ambulance. My mum was at work so I didn't know what happened until the next day. Two people had died in the car crash and subsequent fire. I slept through the noise, apparently. One morning I woke up, got breakfast, and was casually informed by my roommate that our downstairs neighbor's crazy ex came by and shot at him through his door while I was asleep. So not only did I sleep through a shooting, I also slept through the sirens of the cop cars, the arrest, and my roommate giving his eyewitness account to the cops. That's the morning I learned that I will die in my sleep, just not of natural causes. My neighbor's murder on the sidewalk in front of our house. He was shot multiple times. I'd drunk NyQuil, so it knocked me out. Let's see, an earthquake, very very small, severe thunderstorms, and one time a tree fell in my backyard and landed next to my bedroom window. Now, I did wake up, but barely. It was like half awake and I immediately went back to sleep without registering anything. Massive thunderstorm. Apparently lightning struck 200 feet from the house and sounded like a bomb going off. I woke up as if nothing had happened. My car was broken into. Our neighbor called, via the landline, this was a while back, and my roommate woke up and picked up the phone. My roommate ran outside, restrained the robber, and called the cops. The cops showed up and investigated and took statements. This was the hours between 5am and 9am. Then, I woke up and went downstairs to see the last cop car drive away. If I didn't see the last car, I probably wouldn't have believed him when he told me the story. A plant explosion that could be heard and felt for a 25 mile radius. It woke my boyfriend and dog up in the middle of the night, but I had no idea anything happened until I checked the news in the morning. 
When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.